Now, as you can see up there, we got the border wall. They're working on a border fence, drilling some stuff, banging shit around. I'm not really sure what they're doing. I think they're, I think they're drilling the pylons is what they're doing. And if you look that way, this is, we're still in the United States, but that's towards Mexico. The Rio Bravo is only about, I don't know, half a mile that way. And uh, the whole area between where I am and the Rio Bravo is just filled with a series of uh, oxbow lakes. They call them resacas down here. And uh, the reason I tell you that is because... Uh, the presence of those resacas is why you got this tree right here. This is in a redwood family, and it's a tree colloquially known as the Montezuma cypress. Now, as you can see over there, it's all kind of been scraped bare for the agriculture. Who knows what they're growing? The soil's probably filled with all kinds of nasty shit. You know, herbicides, soil sterilizers, other uh, petrol-based chemical uh, fertilizers and whatnot. But uh, they did leave one tree. I'll give them that. They got one tree and they left. They put a nice uh, sign here, right here. See that? They got the sign. So it's official. Granted, they spelled the species up at that wrong. I don't know what mucronatum is. It sounds, maybe it's some kind of nasal decongestion. It's supposed to say taxodium mucronatum. And of course, the, uh, you know, the species name shouldn't be capitalized. You know, just uh, in, in sticking with the, the laws of the botanical and uh, just the, uh, taxonomic nomenclature but at least they tried right now this is a relatively small taxodium mucronatum uh, some of you might be familiar with the tree known as el arbol del tul down there near the city of oaxaca it's actually about 40 minutes east of, this, of oaxaca city in the state of oaxaca mexico uh, el arbol del tul is about i don't know probably 40 times wider than this tree it's it's literally probably the largest uh, tree in the world in terms of girth. It's about, you know, 50 to 70 feet wide. It's a pretty fascinating thing to see. They got a nice fence around it. It's in a plaza. They sell all kinds of trinkets and bullshit in the general area. Uh, I, I believe it's near a church too. So if you ever get a chance to see it down there, you should see it. It's the same species that it's now worth the northern uh, extent of this species range. Okay. Uh, you'll see this. This is a relatively common tree in Mexico. You'll see it growing uh, all along uh, various uh you know arroyos creeks streams etc basically anywhere there's water okay and i guarantee you though it's looking a little haggard right now you could see the bark right there you know probably just because the surrounding forest has been scraped away uh but i guarantee you this this uh this tree's roots are in the water table okay and again there was this there was you know before they put the field here there was an oxbow lake here uh a, a resaca and that's why this tree is here now they they of course logged the rest of them there were probably you know 40 to 50 more in a general area but uh they did leave this one so uh anyway let's take a look at the uh the uh, pollen cone morphology of this uh, lovely conifer so anyway uh, this is a close relative of uh metasequoia the dawn redwood as well as louisiana swamp cypress taxodium disticum uh the uh the louisiana you know the bald cypress which of course you know you could grow in upwards uh, as far north as the chicago or maybe even minneapolis but uh, this species is probably not that cold hardy uh it never goes fully deciduous unlike the bald cypress and uh you, but you can see these little tassel like things in here these are the microstroboli which is just a fancy word for uh pollen cones Remember, this is a conifer, it's not an angiosperm, it's not a true flowering plant, so it doesn't produce flowers like oak trees or maples, uh, it just produces these cones. So, you know, when these are about, about time to go off, let's look at them up close there, see they got the bracts, they got the bracts on there, each of those is a little microstrobolus, uh, and then that'll release uh, a bunch of uh, small pollen grains when they're pollinating. It's of course wind pollinated, and those pollen grains will then blow on to a, what's called a macrostrobolus, a female cone, as you can see up there. Now that's a dry one that's maturing, it's about to be done. Probably got very uh, fertile seed in there, because these trees are self-fertile. They're monoecious, so they got, you know, male and, uh, and female cones on a separate, uh, separate stalks, but on the same plant. Uh, you know, as opposed to being dioecious, uh, etc. You know, where actual the, the individual plant is either male or female. I've gone through all this shit before. We're just just giving you a quick little uh, crash course, all right? So you can see this bastard's old. I mean, this guy's got to be probably 400 years old. Uh, El Arbol del Tul in Mexico is probably upwards of a thousand years old, if not if not the uh, older. And you could just see all those the female cones too, just little brown. You know, a little bit, a little bit smaller than a golf ball shaped spheres. Okay. And of course, each one of those is just a little, it's like a little bract, little triangular, uh, 
piece that fits into the larger sphere. And then, of course, uh, you know, ideally, if this were native habitat, would de hiss from uh, that, that whole globe thing kind of falls apart and the little pieces fall down into the creeks and what the shit and get washed downstream and then, you know, eventually end up on a stream bank where they then germinate into another tree. But you can see the canopy of this. I mean, it's, it's really, it's really something else. You know, the nice, and this is without, it almost looks like one of those southern live oaks with all the Spanish moss in it and shit, even though there's no Spanish moss here. It just, it's still got that, that draping effect. Okay, and of course, a very important tree for the wildlife and shit. I was here the other day, I seen lizards doing push-ups up in the, the fucking branches and stuff. I mean, you know, there used to be jaguars down here back in the day, before they all got wiped out, you know, hunted to extinction for preying on cattle and what this shit. You still got, uh... Uh, ocelots, you still got jaggerundis. So anyway, there you go. There's, and you still see a couple of these. Again, we're at the northern extent of the range. This tree's got a lot more uh, individuals in Mexico. The majority of the population is in Mexico. But you still get a couple here and there on the Rio Grande, on the Rio Bravo. Especially once you go west. When you go west of here, there's a lot more of them left. Now, I mean, not a lot. There's still probably less than 100. But they're, you know, intermittent old big bastards. And you'll see them actually stabilizing the stream bank they got this you know network of roots acting like rebar holding the stream bank you know from getting washed away in a real bravo okay see you know i can't quite reach uh, reach the cones up there okay and this is an average sized italian guy problem all right but you could see the uh you could see basically that, that whole little sphere just the, the hisses and disintegrates and the little pieces fall out now those seeds are only really going to germinate you know, you gotta sow them. You gotta sow them right after you collect them, because they don't they don't really keep that well. Okay, but uh, you know, because remember they're they're meant to again fall into the stream. They they stay wet. They don't really ever dry out, and uh, and then they they germinate from there. But uh, look at this. I mean, you could see it's in a redwood family. Look at it. Oh, is that the indigo snake or is it a western diamondback? Kind of hard to tell. I'm a big old bastard. It might be an indigo. Yeah, you know, I think I'm going to go with indigo snake. What a beautiful bastard. They actually eat the rattlesnakes. You want these guys around. Massive, massive uh, fucking uh, snake too. I mean, look at There's pieces everywhere. So uh, anyway, you know, it's too bad there's not many of these left, but they still do get planted out around the area, and uh, they should definitely be planted out more. And so there you go, Taxodium mucronatum, the, uh, the Montezuma cypress. It managed to get a cone, see it just fell apart. So I'll keep these, I'll probably just soak, I'll germinate them right now. Take them back to the spot I'm staying at, soak them in, okay, soak them in a bag. Okay, maybe give them a little one or two day chill in the fridge, in, in, a, in a bag of water, and then just sow them right there, you know. Sow them in a little pat of a... Uh, of some soil fast draining but you know in this case you don't want it to dry out too much okay if, the, if this were taxodium disticum the uh, northern cousin you know which of course is uh, used to a uh, colder uh, winters i would uh, i'd say keep these in the fridge for a month or two but since it's a this is a relatively a, a subtropical tree i could just sow them right away no need for the stratification okay so you see there's the border wall right there and of course there's the oxbow like this is why i just picked up about 15 mosquito bites you know in four and a half minutes of filming okay just an old uh, risaca an old oxbow lake off uh, off the rio grande the rio bravo and i actually just talked to one of the border patrol guys and they said if you want to come down here and hit this wall uh you know be uh be my guest he said it's fine okay you want to come down here bring your granny bring your kids draw some dicks draw some turds you know, little smiley faces, whatever you want, just a bunch of doodles, it's fine. It's actually, uh, there's a stimulus package getting put out to help uh, to help pay for the paint. They're going to have Montana, uh, old school Krylon from the early 90s, uh, Rust-Oleum with the old rust fat caps. Okay, so anyone who wants to come down here, it's an open wall, come hit it, do some fill-in throw-ups. Again, you could draw some lewd stuff, whatever you want. It's, part, it's all part of the same package, just a massive apology for putting this uh, tacky, heinous shit here in the first place. So uh, anyway, uh, yeah, come on down uh, once you uh, leave, uh, leave your mark.